children, war veterans throughout the world that are experiencing bioneurofeedback. What are the results in the success rate? There's a, there's a payoff for essentially everybody to do this. Mm -hmm. Let's add to the question in terms of what's the attrition rate. Let's assume that the people who walk away were not well served. Mm -hmm. right? For one reason or another, they'll, maybe they tell you they can't afford it or whatever. What we're finding is that early on, the attrition rate was fairly substantial because we had a limited set of techniques. The children that we were helping, those were incredible stories that we had from way back when. But Sue said, okay, but a lot of people in those days also walked away. We didn't have answers for, uh, for a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And so now what's happening is that the percentage of people who are staying, the duration, you know, staying for the, the 20 sessions or more, that percentage is high. Most people are paying for this themselves at great expense. Some of them are coming out of, from out of town and they're sitting in a hotel over here while they're doing the training, right? Mm -hmm. So it's great expense for the families. And so they have to see a payoff or mm -hmm. they're not going to do this. And the attrition rate is now very small. So do people meet the expectations coming here, right? Because mm -hmm. what happens is the expectations shift mm -hmm. when they do this training because they, oh, I, I didn't know that, you know? And so they, there's a shift. So what happens then? There was a nurse who did this work in North Carolina years ago, and she kept close track. She actually kept book. Uh, she, she, when patients would uh, come in, uh, clients, she would sit down with them about their expectations. Now, what would you regard as a success? You have migraines, you know, 20 sessions from now, what would you regard as a successful outcome, right? And she'd write that down. Mm -hmm. This was more than 10 years ago. 98% mm -hmm. of her clients documented that exceeded their expectations. Now, I would say, that's not a big deal. I mean, in one way it is, but in another way it isn't, because people actually come in with modest expectations. Mm -hmm. They don't expect you to get rid of migraines. They want help. Yes. They don't want them to be as severe. I don't want them to be as often. Mm. And I'd like to get more done in my life, and so forth. To be free of migraines, they don't dare hope for that, no. right? No. Okay. So what happens is, mm -hmm. you get a person free of migraine, and they go home, you know, happy. Six months later, they have a breakthrough migraine. And they call you up and says, I have a migraine, you know? That's, that suddenly, <laughs> it came out of the blue, so it's just not okay anymore, right? It says, are you listening to yourself, you know? You well, used to have them, <laughs> you know, five <laughs> times a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, need a behavior, maybe you know, a little more behavioral adjustment, just hold off on the red wine, or come in for <laughs> another session, or something <laughs> like that, right? But, but their, their expectations have been completely reset by yeah. the experience of the inner feedback.